This is Mordhausen, one of the most harrowing chapters in the history of humanity. A fortress of unimaginable cruelty where the screams of the past still echo through its crumbling walls. This wasn't just a prison, it was a factory of death designed to break both bodies and souls. Here, over 200,000 people were subjected to horrors beyond comprehension. Forced labor, starvation, brutal punishments, and for many, this would become their grave. We are in front of the main entrance of the concentration camp Mauthausen. Today, we are going to remember all victims that have suffered and died here in this concentration camp Mauthausen. The concentration camp here itself has a size of 15 hectares. But in the surroundings, there's actually a huge system of more than 40 subcamps. And in Mauthausen itself, there have been more or less 200,000 prisoners. If you compare that number with Auschwitz, it seems little. If you've seen the video of Auschwitz already, you know that in Auschwitz they have died 1,100,000 people, so way more than here in Mauthausen. Nevertheless, it is known as one of the most cruel concentration camps and we are going to explore why. About 50% of the people that came here to Mauthausen died here in this concentration camp. This is the area that you will see once you enter the concentration camp. Mauthausen has been constructed to fulfill Hitler's dream to reconstruct five cities. Berlin, Hamburg, Nuremberg, Munich and Linz were on his list. And these five cities were part of his dream to build the biggest empire of the world. To reconstruct these cities, he obviously needed material and especially rocks. And this area here in Mauthausen was perfect for that because there are a lot of places where you can get granite from. So Hitler contacted Heinrich Himmler, who at that time already led three concentration camps in which mostly prisoners of war have been deported to. Himmler decided to create another concentration camp, this time one that is only 22 kilometers away from Linz. And this is the one we are currently at, Mauthausen. The first prisoners that arrived here in Mauthausen have been from Austria or Germany. Over the time, there have been prisoners from more than 40 different countries. Most of them were either war prisoners or political prisoners, but there were also a lot of prisoners due to their religion, due to their sexuality or their country of origin. Mauthausen is known for its tortures. Here, people have suffered a lot. For example, once they arrived here, they took a shower and that shower was either extremely hot or extremely cold. It was nothing unusual that people had to take super cold showers on cold winter days. Some of them froze to death afterwards. After their first shower, they were given a number which identified them. They were also shaved and given their uniform. And the prisoners lived in wooden barracks here on the campgrounds. We are now in the area of the barracks. You can see some of those wooden barracks here behind me. In those barracks, they were extremely crowded. And then there were some special prisoners that had some privileges, such as better food rations. These prisoners were called the capos, and they were used to basically substitute some guards. So they were kind of cheaper guards. Their tasks were to keep order here on the campground, but they also punished prisoners and in return for that, they were treated better than the usual prisoner. We are in one of the barracks that has been constructed for 300 people, but during the second half of the war, there have been up to 2,000 people in one of these barracks. The barracks are usually divided into a living room area or a common area and the sleeping area. In the sleeping area, there were bunk beds, and each space in a bunk bed has been shared by two prisoners, usually. During the night, prisoners were having about six hours of sleep, but those six hours have a lot of times been interrupted by the functionaries or the capos, who interrupted their sleep just for torture. And then there is a bathroom. You can see here behind me a basin where people could wash themselves. And then behind this wall, there used to be the toilet. It's a very small space, especially if you consider that there have been up to 2,000 people in this barrack. 
The SS usually didn't enter the barracks. They usually prefer to leave that kind of torture in the barracks to the couples. And they did torture the prisoners here with ridiculous tasks that they had to do. And this picture that you can see here behind me on that wall is one of those tasks. Holding that chair in this position over hours was just meant for torture and nothing else. This building here behind me is so far the most shocking building that I have visited here. There you can find a gas chamber that has been used to kill up to 50 people at the same time. 50 people may sound like a very small amount if you've seen the video of Auschwitz where they had way bigger gas chambers. But anyways, these 50 people died in 5 to 15 minutes here. And there's also a crematorium, you can still see the machines where they burned bodies and they burned 150 to 200 bodies a day. Whenever there were more deaths than they could burn in one day, there was also a freezing room basically where they dropped off the bodies they couldn't burn on that day. As mentioned before, Mauthausen was all about torture and that is what made this concentration camp so brutal. In that building you can see buildings of tortures. You can see that prisoners have been, for example, attacked by dogs. You can see how they have been mistreated by the couples. And you can see some photographs of prisoners hanging in the fences dead. So there are some very shocking pictures in that building. Now I said I want to remember all prisoners here of the concentration camp Mauthausen. Usually when we talk about World War II we always immediately think about all the Jews that have died and for a good reason because obviously they were the majority of Jewish people that suffered and got killed during World War II. But there were many other nationalities and here in Mauthausen there were a lot of Spanish people. Spanish people that played a very important role later on when it came to the trials of the Nazis after the war. The Spanish made up a huge quantity of prisoners here in Mauthausen. There were more than 7,000 Spanish imprisoned here in this camp. About 65% of them died here. The Spanish ended up in Mauthausen because after the outbreak of the civil war in Spain, a lot of people had to flee to France. Once the Second World War broke out, the French made the Spanish part of their military to fight against the Germans. But at some point, the French had to give in and the Germans deported the Spanish to some of the worst concentration camps. Mauthausen is classified as a class three concentration camp and therefore categorized as one of the most severe camps that existed. The Spanish have been brought here because for Franco, the dictator at that time in Spain, for him, those Spanish weren't Spanish anymore. They were anti-fascists and not welcomed in their own country anymore. And these Spanish prisoners definitely deserve to be remembered, not only because they were here in a large number, but also because some of them saved proof that was extremely useful during the Nuremberg trials after the World War II. In 1943, Berlin ordered to destroy a lot of proof in the camps including a lot of photos. But there was a Spanish photograph here in Mauthausen. His name was Frances Bosch. And he and his Spanish inmates ensured that some of those negatives of the photographs were saved. In total, they saved more than 2,000 photographs from being destroyed. And thanks to these photographs, there was a lot of proof left that was needed during the Nuremberg trials to give the Nazis that survived World War II a well-deserved trial. In this area behind me you can see a small viewpoint from which you can see the quarry, which is where the workers have been day by day carrying heavy rocks. From this quarry they took away the rocks that have been used for the Third Reich in order to build new cities or rebuild places. It was meant to be the hardest work here in the concentration camp and that is because day by day the prisoners had to carry heavy rocks on their backs of 30 to 50 kilograms each rock. And in this quarry there was a staircase and they had to climb up the staircase all the way basically on that level of the viewpoint more or less. And obviously this was a very exhausting work 
but even worse because the prisoners here had only small portions of food and therefore less energy. That meant that a lot of workers died during their work in the quarry over there. The Nazis also cynically called the quarry the parachute quarry because a lot of prisoners have also been pushed down the cliffs from up here down to the quarry and died there. They have either been pushed down or forced to jump down the cliffs. And the stairs that I have been mentioning before are also known as the stairs of death, simply because there were lots of workers climbing up the stairs with those rocks on their backs. And it was quite dangerous actually, because there was little space and a lot of workers at once. And when one worker fell, it caused kind of like a domino effect. So further prisoners started to fall down. Therefore, this wasn't only the hardest work that is here in Mauthausen, it was also the most dangerous work. I am now in front of the quarry and it looks impressive if I may use that word for this area here. It is huge. I've seen it on videos, but definitely the walls are so much higher than I expected them to be. And we can also see here behind me the staircase that I have been talking about. That staircase is the so-called stairs to death. It's in total 186 stairs that lead you all the way up there to the highest point. You can only imagine how much people suffered under the weight of the granite rocks on their backs. When the Allied troops were advancing in April 1945, the SS began to destroy the traces of its crimes. On May 3rd, 1945, the last members of the SS fled Mauthausen and on May 5th, the first unit of the US Army arrived in Mauthausen. On the following day, further units arrived and finally liberated around 40,000 prisoners in Mauthausen and its subcamps. They found bodies of hundreds of prisoners who had died on the days before liberation. Thousands more were so weak and in bad health conditions that they died in the weeks and months following liberation. I think it is very important to remember all victims of World War II and to keep telling their stories. Because we obviously cannot change our past, but we can learn from it. And therefore, I will keep telling these kind of stories. I hope you learned something about Mauthausen. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And also, if you have even heard about Mauthausen before. Now, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will keep telling stories around the world. See you in the next one.